I'm not sure if you're able to see this. Let me try to turn off the light and get this uh, zoomed in. You see how the light bleeds from the edge here? It doesn't seem to be very visible in camera, but it actually is quite visible in real life. Um, and this drives me mad. In this video, we're going to try to mitigate this issue. It's going to be a mini tutorial in Shaper 3D where we're going to design these little baffles to control the light. Let's get to it. If you're new here, my name is Rui and this is Synthuex Academy. We are a community of makers from around the world and this instrument is the brainchild of Vlad Litvinenko. It's a dual looper slicer with some pretty unique features which I am designing the interface and UX for. We decided to not have any screens from the get-go, no menu diving and very minimal shift functionalities. This makes LED feedback very essential. Now, as I showed at the beginning, um, the light is bleeding because, um, yeah, you have holes everywhere, right? Like if we are now taking the knobs out, you might see it a bit better. When I press this, the light the, the window from here is actually like the LED is actually bleeding to here as well. This might not be a really big issue, um, but for example here, this really bothers me. I don't know if you guys can see this clearly, but like inside here, so this is covered, that's fine, but this one is not covered. So we're going to see the light bleeding from here. Um, in here, you don't really see any of the bleeding and that's because I designed a baffle inside all right let's open this up and have a look we have here actually three baffles that are already created um, these are all the LEDs and this firmware is um, designed to help us test the, the instrument so um, there's no sound here it's only going to change the LED uh, colors, so for example, you can see here how the LED changes the color, and when we touch the touchpads, we turn on the light. This is a baffle that I designed to fit right here, so then when I touch this touchpad, it covers and doesn't let it bleed. I'll show you what happens here you can you can already see even without the faceplate on top you can see how the light is hitting the, the edges and that's going to shine through um, here you don't see it what happens is that it cuts it and it controls the light to stay within the shape what I wanted to do in this video is to maybe show you quickly how we design baffles for these LED rings because we had this idea uh, that would be I think really nice to have let me know what you guys think um, but imagine that you're now uh, recording so we press alt play and it starts recording um, and then it will actually give you an indication so like it will start here and it will give you an indication of how much of the buffer you've already um, finished how much time you actually have left and this now bleeds quite a lot so it would be really nice if we're able to really cut this out and and, and make it really accurate uh, also for other purposes purposes later on this is a really large ring of LEDs so we could use it um, in a meaningful way to give feedback to the user so let's go into Shaper 3D and see how we design baffles for something like this. All right, so how are we doing this? Um, this is Shaper 3D, and what I've done so far is I've added all the components in here. So I've exported the 3D model from KiCad. I also have the enclosure here. That's the aluminum enclosure that we designed and at the top what you see is uh, the F mask from Illustrator so this thing right here can allow us to see the graphics which is great because if I now take the, um, the PCB panel out then I can see exactly 
where the LEDs should shine through. And you can already see how here, for example, the LED is, oh, it's a bit hard to see. The LED is uh, the white thing right here inside. And then this is the part where it should shine through. So one, two, and three. And what I did is I designed this um, plastic piece that uh, is going to be held by uh, a bolt right here into the, into the enclosure. Same thing here, this is the one that I showed earlier. Um, it's held by this uh, jack right here and this SD holder right here. And so what we want to do now is to look into the goggles. Let's take the graphics out for a moment. These are the LED goggles. And if we open the enclosure and take the goggle out, you'll be able to see that there's actually uh, 32 of these LEDs inside. Um, and they're organized uh, as an array. The distance between them, we can check that right here. Although we do have the files, so we can do this digitally, but let's go analog on this. So the space is about one millimeter. And if that's one millimeter and my 3D printer is, uh, can print uh, 0 0.4, I can actually make um, these uh, slits or like rectangles, uh, cubes that are 0 0.8, so that's two layers, um, like two walls, and then inside of a ring. Let's let's try to do that. Okay, back in Shaper 3D, what we want to do is to design for this ring right here. So I'm gonna try to draw directly on the ring, and I want to find the center of this. So let's use a rectangle, place it here in the center, and now I can create a circle. The circle is going to be used for my baffle, and I want to do, I want to make it, like, I, I can't make it too big because, um, because I want to make sure that it doesn't, that it actually, uh, that the light can shine through the complete ring. So let's just say that it's going to go up to here, let's do 23. Okay, um, and then let's add another one, which is going to be 23.8. So this is going to be my ring. And then let's uh, hide everything except for these, because this is getting too heavy for my computer to work with. So uh, command I. Okay, so now we have this drawing isolated. And we can uh, take this and bring it up four millimeters. Now we have this ring. And what? And what we want to do now is we want to take from the center of this circle. So I'm going to click this in spacebar. Now I can see the center of it right here. And what I want to do is to add a um, rectangle that's going to start right here inside. This rectangle is going to be 0 0.8. The height and the length of it, I'll need to see this in a moment, but I assume that that's going to be something like 10 millimeters. We'll check this in a second. Now, what I want to do is to take this drawing and move it so it's in the center, so minus 0.4. Great, so now it's in the center. What I can do now is simply put this down, minus 10, uh, sorry, 4, minus 4, and there we go. Now what we can do is Command F, search, and look for pattern. Pattern, circular, and we want to put here 32 of these in total. Uh, and we want to align it 
to the center of this, which I'm not sure if I can do now. Let me see. Yeah. There we go. So if I turn this now, I'll get 32 of these. How magical is that? So let's get all the way to the end. Bump. Now we have 32 of them. Cool. Done. I'm going to now select everything and command U, which is going to union and create one object out of them. Cool. Now let's just double check command shift I to get back to see everything and command four to see from above. And I can see that my rings are not touching anything on the side, which is great. Um, and they are going to cover the complete um, window. So this is the ring window edge from the outside and this is the ring from the inside this looks pretty good so what i can do now is simply take this object which is going to be hard because i have so many drawings on top of it hide the panel double click the object command i so it's isolated when it's isolated i can do command shift e sdl export now we can open Bamboo Studio and go to our file, drag it in here, slice plate, and I'm seeing a little issue here. It's actually not really printing the inside, I'm assuming it's too thin. The, um, this is correct, so this is uh, 0.8, that's fine, and I guess this just needs to be a bit Let's do 22, make it a bit thicker, and try again. Go back to prepare, delete this, get the new file. Okay, great, this should work. I'm going to use PLA, slice plate. Let's print it and see how it works. And here we go. This is the part we just made. Let's see if it actually fits here. Perfect. Of course, I'll need to secure it somehow, but I'm just curious to see how it's going to change the light distribution. Yeah, you can immediately see now this is a complete glow. And this one right here. Yeah, it's probably going to work. Let's see. Oh, cool. <laughs> I mean, th there is something really nice in the light glowing like this with no control. But in terms of feedback, this is probably going to give me a much more accurate user feedback. I'm not sure about this, but uh, I'm curious what you guys think. Um, this, this is this is interesting. It gives it gives a super accurate result. Uh, this these definitely work really well. The ones that I already designed before, so I'm going to continue to place them everywhere else. Um, but with this one, I'm not sure. What, what do you guys think? Should we actually leave this flowing freely, or should we have it more accurate? Um, so we can get a better representation. Just imagine that you're now recording, you press record, and now you're playing, and it basically gives you the indication of how much of the buffer you've already consumed. And with this, uh, it's, I guess you can also see that, but it's not going to be as accurate. Here you can really get super nice detail. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I appreciate all your support. Check our Discord if you want to join and meet other makers in our community and collaborate. I've already reached out to uh, people who submitted a request for the residency, so uh, we're going to follow up on that soon. And I hope you guys are going to have an awesome day and make something. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.